We're entering into a new age of video editing and it's only going to be the editors that adapt who are going to survive. Now the reason I make this is I'm in contact with hundreds if not thousands of video editors and I'm seeing the gap between the top and the struggling grow larger and larger. Because when I got into editing I was around 16 years old and I actually did all of this as a hobby. I would edit gaming montages for a game called Fortnite where it was me on my crappy little laptop editing these videos and I wasn't getting paid, I was just doing it because I genuinely had fun doing it. Now that was when I found out about client work and I got my first video, did it and I'm just working with these guys at 5, 10, 15 dollars. Now I'm getting to around 3, 4, 500 a month and that's when my parents find out that I edit. Now here's the thing, I have pretty traditional parents where it's the uni, go get a normal job, move up the, client, the career ladder. And for them to hear I'm making online money, sure it's nice, but they were skeptical. Whenever I speak about editing as a career, they always tell me that I really should get into traditional media. You should get into industry, is what they called it. I remember hearing this for the first time and thinking, well, That'd be boring as hell. I would hate working on like some TV commercial or like some film. Sure, like I could do it, but I kind of just enjoy editing these YouTube videos right now. Here's the thing, I didn't believe them, but if you have repeated something hundreds and hundreds of times, you'll start to believe it. I went online and I looked into traditional editing jobs. I go onto indeed.com, which is a way to find jobs. And I'm looking for editing jobs. I go to these workshops that my college was sort of sponsoring. Like they say, hey, there's this, there's this creative agency that you can go into their studio and sort of see how they do it. And I actually go for this workshop. Now, these guys, they're a creative agency and they actually work with some pretty big people. They were working with people like Channel 4, if you're not from the UK, it's a pretty big sort of television thing. They were working with Lego. So, you know, those bricks, these huge, huge channels. And I was convinced. But here's the thing. When there was the editor who was working there, the lead editor, I remember him showing me how much work was being done. And it's at this point I had gotten to around two, three thousand a month. I remember going out of that workshop and searching up just out of curiosity, how much does an editor make in the UK? Here I was going to learn from this guy and don't get me wrong, I still have respect for him. But the average salary for an editor in the UK is between, I believe, 25 to 35,000 a year. Now, don't get me wrong, to some people that's a lot of money, but think about it per month, that's two, 3,000. Now, at the time, I was a 17-year-old dumbass who was editing gaming videos and I was making the same as a guy with over like a decade and a half of experience. Clearly something was wrong. And it was at that moment I realised that traditional media was no longer the move. You don't need to look into wedding videos or music videos. Everything makes money, including YouTube, especially when it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Is it reasonable that you could take at least a few thousand out of that per month? But how do you actually put yourself in a position where you're one of those editors that are actually getting paid? Because sure, the money might be here, but there's no point if you're not actually able to take any of it. Because the flawed belief that most editors have is that just being a good editor is what it takes to make money editing. And it seems pretty natural, right? If you want to win a competition on who can jump the highest, you're just going to jump higher. If you want to make money editing, just edit better. But here's the thing, everyone can edit well now. And it reminds me of this tweet that I saw around a year and a half ago where it went pretty viral in the editing space, had like 20, 30,000 likes. And it was this girl complaining that she had just finished her university in an editing course where she learned about editing and she posted a post where it was like a showreel type thing where it, it's some cool tech stuff moving in with synced with music and it's saying, I can do intros and I can do B-roll and all this stuff. And there was a kid who actually retweeted that and he quote retweeted, meaning he made a post with that post linked and it was his work as well and here's the funny thing in that guy's bio it was him at 15 years old doing it and that girl who originally made that post replied under it pretty much saying like i can't believe i wasted this many years studying it formally for a 15 year old to outdo me she genuinely felt scammed by the education system because she had just spent tens of thousands of, of pounds where a 15 year old who literally could edit these random gaming videos was not only more skilled than her 
but found it easier to get jobs than her. In an age where education is so openly available, where you can literally search on YouTube right now how to edit in Premiere Pro, and you could find tens, hundreds, thousands of hours of free resources where someone would otherwise have to pay tens of thousands of dollars just to even learn how to get into it, everyone has access to that. So now the money is moving less towards who can edit, but more who's able to monetize that skill. So let's talk about how to actually monetize it because I've done it for myself where the clients I've worked with, I've worked with guys with 20, 30, 40 million subscribers, guys like the Sidemen, some of Mr. Beast's channels, Mr. Who's the Boss with like 20 million subscribers. I've worked with these huge guys. My work has gone over a quarter billion views. I've made over six figures from editing and I'm a dumbass 19 year old who started doing this in gaming videos. And what got me here, sure, I improved my editing. But if I didn't have these other skills, everything would fall apart. Until I learned about other disciplines like business, like sales, like negotiations, like psychology. It was only when I learned those topics through way too many hours of reading and buying other people's courses, in all honesty, I would pay people just to learn how to do like kind of dark manipulation shit, even within sales, within negotiations. And guess what? That stuff helped. If I look back to when I was in college, so this is a couple of years ago, I was 16 years old and I had the worst social skills I could ever imagine. I couldn't speak to a single person. In fact, I came from an all boys school, meaning when I went into this college, I'm seeing all my old friends meet new people. Some are even getting girlfriends. Some are like just, they're just working their way out and everyone's meeting new people while I'm here, not able to meet anyone new. And I'm seeing my friend group get smaller and smaller while I'm stuck in this silo. It made me so insecure that I started working on my social skills and I read this book religiously. It was called How to Win Friends and Influence People. While in school, I would read it and I'd go meet someone and implement that social skill where it would say, chapter whatever, smile. When you see someone smile and I'd go do that thing. Oh, talk about their interests, never your own. And I'd go implement that. And these things sound so obvious. People think they have amazing social skills, but then they still get ghosted by clients. So clearly, your social skills aren't as good as you think they are. And I had to humble myself and tell myself that. It sounds weird, but it's when I started going to the gym. And don't get me wrong, like, I'm not a huge guy. I'm still pretty skinny boss. But like, we've got like a little bit going on. You know what I mean? And in a weird way, it was when I had my health in check. It's when I started working out. So I, I started looking into my diet. I started thinking, oh, let me have a high protein and fat diet rather than just having carbs. And what about if I intermittent fast? It was all these weird things over the years where I could get videos done faster. I could learn faster. I'd be more focused. And it went from editors burning out this stereotype of the editor in his mom's basement where I hated that stereotype and I broke out of it. And the funny thing is, it made me a lot more money while enjoying my craft. Because I remember how when I was around 18, so this is the point where I'm already making a decent money editing. It's like maybe three, four, five thousand. So I knew I'd be wanting to do this full time. I remember a tipping point where I was genuinely deciding whether I want to go into editing at all. The reason being uni applications were coming up and I was considering it because I didn't know if I wanted to actually be known as an editor. I couldn't imagine myself in two, three years editing videos, being known as like the, the loner, the loser in his mom's bedroom, like mom's basement, just like working and being like some skinny, smelly boy. And I hated that stereotype and I didn't resonate with it. And even if you go to like these events about creative stuff or editing, everything was so like left wing and don't get me wrong, we don't get political here, but like, it just wasn't values that I aligned with. I was gonna quit. And I look back at it and I'm so glad I didn't because there are so many editors and I'm in those communities now, but there's so many editors who are so similar to what I liked. They were editors where they enjoy the craft of editing, but they actually do also care about their health. There's guys that also work out, that also care about diet, that also love learning, that also like working hard, that like, they're actually like guys, like, you know what I mean? Like they're fucking like, they like being fucking men. I don't know how to explain it, but it's not like this, this wet shit, man. Like, <laughs> I didn't even think that editors were like this, but it was only when I started networking more online that I realized that there's people, editors out there where they also care about 
being in shape and I'm not fucking huge but like you know what I mean like this is the type of vibe that I'm on not me me staying in my mom's basement all day so if you are an editor right now who is trying to make this a full-time thing or perhaps you've already started making some money and now you just want to scale it far as fuck realize that some of the highest leverage activities you can do sure it'll be editing but also I mean if you don't have clients it's pretty hard to even practice editing because if Kobe Bryant didn't have real games to actually play in pretty difficult for him to actually improve because sure he could shoot three free throws all day but it's only when the stakes are real that you're actually going to improve they say that desperation is the mother of innovation and it's only when you have a client project due that you know the guy has paid you and you know that the expectations are there that's when you're forced to learn new effects that's when you're forced to become faster that's when you're forced to learn new things because you're, you have no other option. Desperation is the mother of innovation. And sure, you can do a thousand practice edits. You'd probably learn more by just doing one client video. So the more clients you can have and the larger and larger clients you work with, the more practice you will get. You want to learn how to deal with larger clients? Work with larger clients. You want to, work with, you want to learn how to deal with negotiations? Get more... Get more client conversations going so you can practice those negotiations you don't learn on the sidelines you learn by throwing yourself into the trenches and you'll figure it out as you go i didn't realize it at the time but this editing thing this thing i started as a hobby it is entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is just solving problems for other people and you get paid for it and as an editor that's what we're doing Bear in mind, I'm in contact with the biggest channels in the world and every single one of them, they say like, it is difficult to find a good editor. The only editors that say, oh, editing is saturated and no one's even looking for clients. The only editors that say that, no offense, it's the guys that aren't actually solving any problems because once you speak to clients that are actually like willing to pay hundreds, if not thousands per video, they're all saying like, we're willing to pay it's just that no one is even good enough. No one is even willing to put in work. No one's able to fix their own life. They're all struggling with their own time management. And fair enough, like you can struggle with time management, but it's about are you actually putting in active effort to solving? Are you actually putting in active effort to solving your workflow, into actually improving your visuals, into actually putting yourself into the right networks where you're able to learn from other people rather than spending four years on learning on your own? Like I did. <laughs> So that's how I see the world of editing moving. It's becoming less about can you edit. It's becoming more editing is the base skill and the entrepreneurial editor wins. It's the editor who has his sales, his marketing in check. It's the editor who knows psychology and understands how to message people in order to make them feel both respected, but also to make them respect you and actually want to work with you. It's the editor who can sort out his health and can actually network in a way where he doesn't feel burnt out but rather he's inspired by his circle it's those editors that are going to thrive and it's the editors that think i just need to edit more videos that times will catch up to them but yeah that's today's video hope you found it useful if you do like it like subscribe or don't i don't really care um and we also have the editing layer in the description which is my paid program I'm fully transparent about it. I fucking love making money. I like making editors money. Let's all just make money together. It's where I take editors who, in fact, let's speak about who we don't help. We don't help editors who are just starting out and they've never even edited a full video. They've never, like, they're trying to learn how to import footage and cut. That's not the type of person we help. There's three videos for that. We help editors who have already gotten to that first stage where they've used free resources and now they're at a stage where maybe they're making a little bit of money, whether it be 100, 200, 300 bucks a month, or even a couple of thousand. Anywhere where they've gotten to the point where the free resources have helped them, but now they're not really sure where to go from here. That's where we've taken hundreds of guys to two, three, four, five, and even past 10k a month. Um, if you do want to check that out, that's in the description. If not, no worries. I just thought it'd be useful. So yeah, take care. See you in a bit.